Well, hello everybody, Marvel fans. Welcome. I am Robert Stack. I'm just kidding. That's not my name, but it might as well be because of what we're talking about today. Ah. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? My name is Ryan J. Whitehead, and man, the Holy Trinity yes. is back. We're in full effect. And we finally have gotten our co-host, Anna, back on the air. Hello. Hi, everyone. Thank you for having me. This is Welcome back. Happy New Year to both of you, because I think this is the first time I've happy gotten a New chance year. to see both of your lovely faces in 2022. So happy New Year. Yes. Yeah, happy, happy New Year, and indeed. I'm really excited. I don't know about you guys, uh, but this episode is something that I've been thinking of for a while and I'm glad we're getting a chance to do it because uh at, at the end of the year I looked back and I thought of how much Marvel we got in 2021 and it was like we got a lot of stuff mm -hmm. and yet there's still all these dangling little juicy threads just waiting to be tied up uh so that's what we're going to hypothetically do today is we're going to hypothetically tie up those threads we're talking about the unsolved mysteries of the mcu and if i was talented enough music wise i would start playing the unsolved mysteries theme and then we'd get sued but it would be worth it well for Ooh, 30 seconds you can play. okay let's all start humming at acapella <laughs> <laughs> yeah that show gave me so many nightmares as a kid i, I could not handle the music <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't remember Unsolved Mysteries, to be honest with you. The only thing that comes to mind immediately is uh, Twilight Zone or uh, X-Files. Or X-Files. Yes, yeah. X-Files and Twilight Zone. Mm -hmm. They are scary. Those yeah. are scary. You would, if you'd watched Unsolved oh. Mysteries, Ryan, you'd, re you'd remember the trauma of the music of the, the opening credits. It's, uh, <laughs> ooh, it, it is just shivers. And it's usually just about missing persons, you know, but every once in a while there's like, Hey, look at that ghost over there. And it's just like, whoa, I can't handle this. I'm frightened now. So yeah, uh, I promise there won't be any ghosts maybe in our episode. I don't know. I'm looking at my list. Oh, there is some supernatural stuff, but we'll get there when we get there. Uh, so how do you guys feel? You ready to dive into these mysteries? Yes. I am, I'm interested to see Anna's critical eye on some of these <laughs> story <laughs> plot holes. Oh, uh, let's see. <laughs> Let's 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 make sure we keep our ranting at a tame pace, you know. Let's not go yes. too ranty on one specific one. Let's open it up. But at the same time, I mean, I'm excited. I'm excited because there's some interesting things I want to kind of work out. But we'll get to it, and uh, yeah, it's going to be fun. This is going to be a good good. I have a feeling story. because you guys are so knowledgeable. I feel like between the two of you, you actually know the answers to all these mysteries, and you're just stringing me along. You're just entertaining. Oh no. <laughs> I feel like Ryan really just he's the storyteller here. Ryan is we'll see. definitely we'll see. We'll see the webs Ooh, we weave. Okay, yeah, that, that cements it on it. He knows what's going on here. He's he's not fooling yeah. anybody. Uh, well, this is a good way to test this knowledge because the first one, uh, I kind of had these mysteries written chronologically in the order that the questions were raised. And the first one is one of Ryan's, which is where you been at, leader? Samuel Stearns, where are you? Yeah, that's right, Dr. Samuel Stearns. All right, so let's start with the Incredible Hulk. We have Dr. Samuel Stearns. He appeared in the scene where he tried to reverse engineer the Hulk and thus give him a cure. Yeah. And yeah. through that, uh, and then through that experience, he actually tried to help the Abomination become more Abomination E. And through that experience, accident happens, he mutates, and boom, we get ourselves the leader. Uh, yes. Now, that being said, uh, that being said, this is Marvel MCU. This is canon. This is this counts. So where has he been? What has he been up to? My guess is if they're going to push it, I think he's part of Operation Paperclip. And I think he's actually kind of working, going to be working with S.H.I.E.L.D. Because S.H.I.E.L.D. would have been, because if, uh, Ross was at the events where Samuel Stern and Abomination were taking place. Chances are S.H.I.E.L.D. were not too far off, so they probably picked up Stern's pretty quickly. But where, like, where do you see him starting out in the Marvel Universe? Like, I, I don't think they're going to pick up anything else with the Hulk. I think that's done. 
I don't think so because if they're not done, if they're doing She Hulk, they're not done with the Hulk. In fact, I think She Hulk is going to give a lot of breadth to the world of the Hulk uh, because we're re seeing Abomination. But I think okay. in terms of the, I, I'm I'm going to try to also as much as I'm going to be a storyteller here. I'm also just going to think of like what the formula has been and really just apply said formula. So okay. every ep every series with WandaVision, Loki, Falcon Winter Soldier, mm -hmm. there's a four episode build up to a big surprise and that big surprise ends up influencing everything. So yeah. for for WandaVision, not only is the fourth episode kind of really the deep down introduction into um multiverse. I want to say well that and uh uh, what's her name? I want to say Spectrum. Spectrum. Well, Photon. Photon. There you go. Yeah. So introduction of Photon. And then they talk about the Fantastic Four shuttle. So there was a couple of nods there. But the biggest character introduction was her in episode three to episode four. Mm -hmm. So my guess is Samuel Stearns will probably make an appearance in the fourth episode of She-Hulk while she's doing this court case and dealing with the abomination and and they're gonna bring in Samuel Stearns, who's or who's like all messed up and stuff. So I think I think he's gonna be introduced, reintroduced in that as like a big kind of tie-in. Damn, Ryan. <laughs> because well, because you got to think about it, right? They still have to clean up. They still have to clean up what's going on in Incredible Hulk because now we have we have Ruffalo as our new banner, um, but at the same time they need to kind of clean up the abomination with that. And with that, they need to go back to the origins and bring back these characters and give them justice. And that's what these series really do a good job in is, is bringing these characters in and giving them new life. And oh my God, Ryan, you just say it so simply this. Oh. Because it just makes sense to me because again, they could, they could bring in the wrecking crew. They could bring in, you know, other gamma villains um, that mm -hmm. the Hulk has, but Marvel's not going to spend too much time on new things. They need to clean up what they have. And, and if, if they do something new, then that means they have to tell that story and take that time. They don't have that. They're not, if so far from everything I've seen, unless that person's a continued element throughout the entire series, which we are getting Titania in She-Hulk, which means we already got our one new character. They're not going to, introduce other characters because they don't want to take away from the spotlight so therefore you're going to substitute in samuel stearns the leader it just makes sense and that would be a good surprise because to be fair i mean you know raise your hand but an incredible hulk was really good like if you take away the politics that is edward <laughs> norton and the whole banner thing it's still a good story is it the uh, best marvel is it the best marvel no but it's still no a good no no I'm gonna have to correct. I'm gonna have to correct you as someone that is a huge fan of Edward Norton, and I would have loved for him to have the creative and creative influence that he wanted to have in this film. The reality is that movie was cut and spliced so poorly. Ninety. I, th I when I rewatched the movie, I think what's the movie is like an hour and a half. I think less than two hours long, and mm -hmm. I would say about an hour of it is explosions explosions they destroyed the story by wanting to market this film as a kid's movie like they chose to believe that their audience would be so dumb that blow things up make them happy like they had a they had a really great start to a story and they would if they would have just allowed they would have just been bold enough to be dark like they are now mm -hmm. it would have been a great film I, I i i love edward norton and i love the start but everything else was a mess there is no, there's no real deep dive into character building, which I will agree with you on. Like they yeah. kind of over, they kind of overlook some really cool ideas like Edward Norton was going at. Um, but in the end, I mean, it starts off with a wonderful chase of, of them going through it. There was also some really cool nods. They mentioned Canadian hunters that went after yeah. Banner. So there's some nice moments there. I agree with you. They didn't give it the breath it deserved, but still yes. it's a, it's a simple story that stays on its path. And that's and, and 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 that's why I say it's good. Is it not the best? Is it is it like Thor's Ragnarok of like the Hulk series? Okay. No, it's not. I think Hulk needs to have a Ragnarok personally, like a a movie that really yeah, like a refresh. Yes, yes, like a huge refresh. I think absolutely. I, I think the She Hulk could be a fun way of. Well, we may not give you a Hulk movie, but we'll give you a Hulk world. 
And yes. I think that I think that there could be some themes that easily could be put in there. Like they could talk about like with Ruffalo being this kind of Obi Wan figure in in She Hulk. I think that I think that he could do like flashback moments uh, similar to well, hopefully way better than what they did in Doctor Winter Soldier, where they actually flash back to moments he had being the Hulk and like the struggles. Mm-hmm. The struggles he had because even in the original Avengers film, he got into that. Like he got into the struggle of being the Hulk. And mm-hmm. and really, if you look at the Avengers movie, it's the Hulk's story. It's the Hulk's perspective in the world of the Avengers. No, for sure. And there were a, a couple lines from that that were from um, Ed Norton's Hulk that I really mm-hmm. liked that they did some parallels. Like, do you, you, don't, you don't think I've tried? When yeah. I did it, the big guy spit it out. Which is what Edward Norton wanted to do at the start of the movie. Have himself put the gun in his mouth and then have the Hulk spit it out. Right. So, so, so it's it, so, it's kind of nice to see that they're they're willing to kind of like allow a little bit of that darkness. Because how could you not? How could you not allow that in the Hulk? It, it, I think that's what really got me. It's like the Hulk is a really tragic character, right? He is mm-hmm. a really tragic hero because he has no other choice but to be what he is. Exactly. Like he's and- stuck. He's stuck. And I think he's still going through grieving. Like if we're talking, if I'm going to, uh, don't worry, don't worry, Fantasia, we're going to summer the, we got to tame this. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, yes, sorry. Yes, let's, let's debrief uh, the Hulk's erectile, just te- temporary erectile. Well, he response. says it's temporary, but come on, Anna, we don't believe that for a second. <laughs> oh God. But to, to kind of wrap it all up in a neat little package, I think we'll see Samuel Stearns in She-Hulk. I think that's going okay. to be their big surprise. They're going to they're going to bring back the same actor because I'm sure that actor is more than happy. He's the he's the perfect type of actor to do that kind of stuff. I mean, we've seen him in Watchmen, so it's it's just right up his alley. That that being said, we're going to get the She-Hulk experience, and I think that not I think through that we're going to get we're going to get the next stage of Hulk's kind of emotional journey which which i have to phrase it as they they rejected each other then banner needed him but he rejected him and <laughs> yes. now there's then an end game they they both accepted each other so now at this point do they actually accept each other like because i know banner always struggled with the control of the hulk and it seems like he he made it but the hulk is still just like an like a force of nature so he could regress. There's so many ways you can build on that character. So I think in She-Hulk, She-Hulk might kind of open that conversation. And and again, they're not going to introduce too many new things because they can't uh, branch off. I would disagree with theory only because if you re- if you watch the end credits of Shang Chi, you see like you see him like human again. He's right. back in control as a person. He has his arm in a sling. So obviously they're coexisting in some capacity. If he's able to be Dr. Hulk and and then himself whenever he wants. I don't they know, will... but that also that begs the question. He thought that the Hulk was the cure and he was the Hulk the whole time. So why would he change back to human form? Right? I, I think there's I think there's an unsolved mystery there. <laughs> oh, um, oh, Ryan. <laughs> I could open a lot of doors, but my point is yes. Stearns is going to be the big gem in She-Hulk. It's it's perfect. It's just it it's lines everything up. Hulk's yeah. Ragnarok. It's going to be Hulk's Ragnarok. Yeah, I love that I'm, idea I'm of that. Hulk Thank meets the Ragnarok, and I, I like Stearns oh, can absolutely. be to this show what Kingpin was to Hawkeye. Like the surprise, I'm canon again. Oh, Here man. I am. Uh, like the if you look at all the worlds of uh, of Marvel, like. Here's Asgard, here's the Spider-Verse, etc. If, if you look at all those as like a vein of gold in a mine, right? The Hulk vein is so big, as they all are, and they just kind of chipped and broke ground a little bit and took a few nuggets and just left it sitting there for like 10 years. And it's still there. We mm-hmm. just got to grab some picks and go down there and find ourselves some Wrecking Crews and some Leaders and some Red Hulks, please, etc. Like that's all coming. And I think She-Hulk is, yeah, the perfect place to drop that big veiny mm-hmm. bombshell. What? What did I say? Um, uh, all right. <laughs> That's what happened to the leader, maybe. Next one is also one of yours, Ryan. And I want you to clarify, because I think you're talking about Captain Marvel with this mystery. But uh, it is, did they find any mm-hmm. astronauts for the sword shuttle? 
Are you talking about the post credits Captain Marvel? This was actually no. I'm actually talking about the reference in WandaVision, uh, talking about episode four. That that stupid director dude of Sword, who is absolutely <laughs> garbage as a human being, um, he he mentioned they walked by the the space shuttle and they said, well. You know, ever since the blip, we actually have had a hard time finding candidates for the mm. the program, and we're all betting. We were all betting that it's that it's Fantastic Four that we're going to get the Fantastic Four. They're going to either steal the shuttle, which is what they do in the comics. They actually steal the shuttle, not sword shuttle, but they steal a shuttle to get into space. Um, but uh, is the unsolved mystery is is are they going to continue with that? Because that was at the very beginning. Like that was like. Again, at the very beginning of this phase, and we still haven't seen anything about it. So is it going to be in the Marvels because it's got to deal with Photon? Or is it going to... Are we not going to see anything till Fantastic Four? I feel like not till Fantastic Four. Only mm. because that's the other... That's the other Marvel flop that hasn't had a Ragnarok. Right. Like, well, we know, we know they're coming, right? Like, we know that's right. going to happen. Because I've been, there have been little, cur- like, drops of hints about, or not about them, but, infer- like, you can infer it's about them. I don't know. We don't We don't even know if it, they it are going to be I mean, astronauts a- in this iteration. Ooh. Oh, shit. That's a really oh, dang. Mic drop moment. So, I uh... I got. I got to give you props. Well, I mean, I got to give props to that they could be. They could be caused. They or sorry, they could be chronological ex- mm-hmm. explorers or whatever. Um, there's there's a lot of rumors about that. But my point is, it's still kind of an unsolved mystery because they kind of like they they put it front and center, and they even gave it dialogue, which means it's not like it's not like the Doom Doctor Doom Easter egg we've seen in Moon Knight. It's not. Mm-hmm. It's like it's not something you just like quickly flash an image and be like, okay, it's coming. You know what I mean? Like, they literally was like, here's a giant space shuttle. Too bad we don't have astronauts to go to space. Like, and you're just like, like, everyone was like, like, like wanting to jump through the screen and just shake the guy. But like, and and then literally seconds later is they're like, oh, I'm gonna bring in my super tech friend. And everyone's like, oh my god, it's Reed Richards, it's Hank McCoy, it's whatever. But the fact of the matter is, is like, they left it. They literally left it the way it is and and usually when marvel brings up something with dialogue like and gives it breadth of dialogue that means like they're building at something and they didn't build they they left it where it is maybe it means nothing maybe this is a ralph boner exactly just mean nothing maybe it means nothing oh god i hate that i I really hope it's not a ralph boner i i don't think like i think listen you had many theories about mephisto (laughs) we have yet to see him (laughs) <laughs> uh you know what i'll take i'll take a hit on that i'll take a hit on that point that's fair <laughs> that's fair but that's not to say you know mephisto's not around because you know the book <laughs> the book and then the, then the then the stained glass it's like you can't argue it could just be nothing it could just be nothing hypothetical situation at you guys it's not the fantastic four who take the shuttle it's ralph boner and christine everhart and out in deep space, they meet oh, a nihilist, Let it go. and he fuses with Let her. Let it go. No. Let it go. <laughs> Nobody wants that. Only Fantasia does. Yeah, only Fantasia wants that. No, when does. it happens, Ryan's going to be oh, cheering God. louder than me. I promise. <laughs> I do kind of like Fantasia's uh, idea of like maybe they're not astronauts. Yeah, they could be. Uh, th- there's a lot they could do with yeah. it. Uh, Ryan, you brought up the idea once how you compared Rick Sanchez from Rick and Morty to Reed Richards, and it's like, what if what if Reed is just this weirdo yes. in his garage who's just too smart for his own good, and you know he peeled back a curtain to a world he had no business peeling back a curtain to, and now all of a sudden the genie's out of the bottle, and he is just riding through space and time in a little bathtub with his wife and his friends and fighting monsters. I think, I think they could introduce him as like coming through a portal from another dimension and being like, Hey, I'm we're the fantastic four. And yeah, like kind of like a Rick and Morty moment, but they, I think they still 
I think Marvel needs to give Fantastic Four the intro everybody wants. The Ragnarok. You... They want the Ragnarok. They want. They want, and I mean that's going to be the, the Anna. You've already said it. Like that's going to be the coin <laughs> term of this entire episode. But it think true. about it. Like they did. They did the terrible space shuttle one in the move. The first movie where like Victor oh. funds the whole thing. They take a shuttle the, into the space station, and it's a whole thing. No, yeah. I think they need to do literally as close to the comics as possible. They take a shuttle. They get hit by cosmic rays. They yes. force back into Earth crash fantastic four the they fun, need yeah. to do something as remotely close to that because fantastic four needs their due and and everyone everyone every comic book fan is just biting their time just waiting for this this moment because After. once that happens it's so it's so it's so like conf- like it just makes them feel so validated you know what I mean? Like it's because it will give it will give everyone that that moment of like Kevin Feige, you still did it. Like you you did it. You did it. Like you did. You, you fixed did the, the moment. previous abominations. Well, not only that, because everyone was like begging for him to take Fantastic Four from Fox, right? The court case, the the whole trial, and all that stuff. Like everyone was begging for him to get it so they can get the Fantastic Four they want. And if, mm-hmm. as long as Feige does that small thing literally just give them that small like like even if reed richard's like yes we went into space and this ha-, like even if it's a story a memory kind of like the homecoming effect the the, mm-hmm. the the homecoming move then that's all people want then check mark you know then you can do whatever you, do you want you just fantastic. want this so that uh, we and can get the theme that. song because i am on board with that <laughs> on and out of space that they got hit hey. because- that's it that's it that's all we want Give us something good. Just go back to the basic. After all those previous movies, that was really, that was really <laughs> oh, brutal. Yeah, they need a win, right? So that's what I'm saying. It, it, they need a win, and you have you've teed it up. You've teed it up with the shuttle, and that's why that's it's still an unsolved mystery right now. But it could be the biggest Marvel payoff in terms of like investing in the MCU, like because everyone who will have seen that Fantastic Four moment. Mm-hmm. where they take the shuttle and then boom, cosmic rays and crash, then they'll be like, that's the shuttle. That's the shuttle from WandaVision. Right. And that's, that's a moment both Marvel and Disney will want because they I'm want hoping, you talking about that. I'm hoping because they've already done so many origin stories that they do pull a homecoming where it just, yes. like, let's just set where we are. We are already like in this moment, you don't, mm-hmm. it doesn't need to be told. We need to watch uncle Ben being shot again. We're done. Yeah. Exactly. Well, and that's my point. But like, because we haven't, because Fantastic Four hasn't had that grace period, like that mm-hmm. hasn't had that graceful moment. I think just a flashback, like of like literally, you just need to show them flying the damn thing, and then show them on the ground looking around, getting their powers. Like that's all you need to do. You, you could, don't think you they could would just see say them? it. You could say it, but I think it would be better if you get the visual. Okay. I think something they could end up doing because they tend to do this thing a lot. Oh, there I am. I'm there. They tend to do this thing a lot is uh, yeah. something will happen in like, I don't know, Ant-Man. Um, and whatever happens there, that's the, the cosmic rays. Like, oh shit, Hank, I just yeah. accidentally turned this bomb on. I'm sorry. Boom. <laughs> and then the post credits is like, wow, this space trip <laughs> yeah. was a good idea, right guys? Boom. Uh, probably more eloquent than that, uh, but uh, then uh, they get hit by cosmic mm-hmm. rays, etc. But I mean, I mean, Anna, Anna actually could take the win here on this on this conversation because they could easily mm-hmm. just say it happened and not even show it. But my point is, they still mm-hmm. need the yeah. event to happen. They need to right. they need to do the Peter Parker thing where they need to say like we took a shuttle and we hit some cosmic rays and you know, boom, we're here. And that's what happened. Mm-hmm. Like they, that still needs to, that, that validation of like, we know, we know fans that you want the, int- you want the origin and we're telling you that's what happened to them. Cause you know it so well, we're just letting you know. Yes. That's what happened to them. That's why Peter Parker was like, yo, I was uh, at a lab and I got bit by a spider. You know- yeah. Everybody knows. You know we don't need to see test it. For that. Mm-hmm. 
I, I would have... like to. I would <laughs> like to, but I agree with you. Five movies. I'm really had curious five movies. to We're see good. if yeah. they do that this March in the Batman. Because we don't need to see Thomas and Martha get shot again. So I'm really curious to see them handle that in that way. Because they haven't really done that yet. I... I don't think so. It's giving me very much like an established Batman. Like he's yeah. full on detective mode. Yeah. Like maybe we'll see him starting to elevate himself of, of, as more as the Batman. But I, I don't, I, it doesn't, that's not the impression at least I've gotten from a lot of the trailers. It looks like it's very much him as an adult or well, at least going into right. as detective Batman. Yeah, I think that, well, I think Burton did it best. Like, you didn't even really see what happened. You just see, you no. see the, the mysterious gunman and then the smoke in the alley. The sh- yeah. Yeah, but you, and you hear it, <clears throat> but you never see it. You never see the parents, like, die in the first die. one. The second, the second one, they kind of elaborate on it further. But, like, the first one, you just see the gunman and that's it. And I, I think, again, I honestly, even if he held the gun and just you hear the gunshot... You know, mm-hmm. you, you, just as a memory. A fan, yeah. Just yeah. a memory. Like you as a fan know that story so well. It's, and it, it's, and again, it's not, it's <laughs> the Ragnarok. <laughs> it's the homecoming. It's the homecoming. You know, the origin. Why waste the time? Trust your audience, trust your audience. And that's the problem with DC. They're not willing to trust their audience, that their audience mm-hmm. is smart enough to know. I already know this. I already know this. You don't need to tell it to me. Yeah, yeah, and uh, hopefully we'll get there with Fantastic Four. I love how, you know, Marvel's doing something right when you can use two of their titles as verbs at this point. Like, oh, <laughs> damn. It has to, it, we need to put it in the dictionary. Yeah. We're going to get to the point in like 40 homecoming. years where the like college kids are like, dude, this party's totally Ragnarok. <laughs> <laughs> we were the first, motherfuckers. <laughs> we were first we did it here uh but i will say i and, and homecoming is a perfect verb to use because homecoming was a reboot for him to yeah. come home to mcu and get a proper treatment so it actually works as a yeah that title was really that was a cheeky oh, title perfect. i remember when they announced that i was like i see what you're doing i see i see you so well Let's uh, let's leave the Fantastic Four in space for now and come down slightly to Earth, uh, maybe a few hundred feet above the Earth, because our next question is, where did White Vision go? Yes! Because we left, where we left off White Vision, he had that realization that he wasn't yes. the Vision. He was a Vision. So what does that mean? Does that mean this, the, the White Vision is... Um, is sentient is it is he now sentient is he going to become a different iteration of vision it's, i because that's I, that's how we kind of left off right like realizing that he wasn't the original vision that he was just a copy and it's like okay i i'm okay i gotta I have yeah to it now. was uh like an identity mm-hmm. kind of thing of like who am i what am i it feels like they're gonna go the same road that they went with gamora where it's like, okay, she's back, but she's not the one you remember. But yeah. there's still the question of, okay, there is a vision floating around somewhere. What you know, what's what's his deal? Where's he gonna end up? Who's he gonna interact with? But he has vision's memories. He's he's not like he does have vision's memories, or like he doesn't he have he, he's a copy of vision. So those memories I technically would still be on that hard drive so he is he is and isn't vision so what i'm hoping that we could very much like gamora that it's going to be like a building back of a relationship but i don't i just don't know how you would bring in white uh vision unless we see him in um uh dr strange in the dr strange that's a good place Mm -hmm. i don't know if we'll see him in that I don't it doesn't don't, make sense. It doesn't yeah. make sense because he's not connected to the kids, right? Like he there's no connection to the children. The only connection would be Wanda. So it and if he left, we're we're facing someone with an identity crisis of not not knowing who they are, what their task, what their goal is. Mm-hmm. They're now sentient. Who are they? How do I access mm-hmm. these previous memories? Okay. Yeah. 
I don't know. So, I think I think he's gonna go on a on a path of self discovery, like like just, a walkabout. Yeah, like a walkabout. I don't know. I don't know if he's gonna do anything like like for example, just to give you like an idea of how far we could go with this. He, like he could go out into space and then the guardians find him later on. You know what I mean? Like, but that just doesn't seem like, like it doesn't make sense as to why this is someone who lost their identity or wasn't given an identity. Then was told he had an identity and he's a reflection of somebody. Then that person was, turns out was the reflection and he's the, he's like the zombie vision. So but, that's I mean, lot. what we saw from WandaVision that Wanda holds a piece of, vision forever a piece of vision is in her forever because of the stone so she she could be the one that like re-imprints white vision but when are we going to see that when would we how would we when would vision enter unless we got a uh scarlet witch standalone movie but didn't but didn't that vision like the the scarlet witch's vision that she created uh wasn't didn't he imprint his soul if you will onto the the vision yes because that, but that was the whole ship of thesis experiment right yeah yeah but it's in that in that hard drive so i'm assuming it's got it, it wanda has to be involved she has to somehow trigger that again because yeah. how would white vision know to do that or even care to do that mm-hmm. so i think i wonder if maybe vision is just kind of lost like a an, um not quantum myself what's it called the uh superman's Oh, quantum solace? No. Like he maybe exiles himself somewhere. Yeah. Fortress, like I don't, a fortress, like creating himself a fortress of solitude somewhere in the Arctic, just like mm-hmm. choosing to solitude because he doesn't like. Okay, I don't know who any like. I don't know what the world yeah. is. You know what? I hear. I'm gonna throw. I'm gonna throw a really cool one on you. you like a Doctor Manhattan situation. He's just such a transcendent being. He's like, I'm just, just going to just hanging out on Mars, just eating grapes. I'm gonna. I'm like gonna we don't know what Vision can do. I'm gonna throw a curveball at you guys here, and I'm okay. gonna give. This is not. This could not play out, but I'm gonna say it is because I just. I think it's one of the best moves you could do in terms of storytelling. Yeah. What if? I hate that. I hate using what if right now, but I have to do it. What if, what if by that scene where the whole ship of thesis thing and then Vision's like, oh, okay, let me wake in your mind and like reset you. What if that reset reawakens Ultron within him and then he's going out to rebuild Ultron? Mm, Come on, just no. just live with me here. No, because <laughs> Ultron is home. entirely separate. There was nothing of Ultron that was uploaded into Vision's body. Are you sure about that? Because in Age of Ultron, he started Vision. He started him. And he even hooked his head up into the thing. I think it would be pretty cool. uh, I like my my Dr. Manhattan. Like, I would like to see him either in another universe or him creating his own universe. Mm would be it would be cool i mean either as a result of either either opinions on this one um though i do like we're on different ends of this because again i think i think the possibilities are endless here at vision i think vision should build either rebuild ultron or rebuild or or build joe costa because i think joe costa would be a cool character to have. oh that would be good yeah i i uh, we would we were the last thing was it vision said before he disappeared was like this is not the last time we'll meet. So it's, mm-hmm. what is it? It's, it's, it's good to assume that it won't be the last. So, I mean, yeah. they're going to see each other again. Vision's going to come back. But w- where, when, and how he comes back, that will yeah. be really interesting. That's a tricky question. It's so debatable. It's- maybe he won't even, maybe he won't even be, because he, if he's left idle and wondering, maybe he's easily influenced and he becomes a tool to somebody else. And maybe you don't, maybe you see him again as an antagonist to Wanda. Uh, Maybe Mm -hmm. he's this character is such a cipher. Like it feels like he could pop up anywhere, but at the same time, he doesn't fit anywhere. Like would, are we anywhere to assume we're waiting for an Avengers five before we see him? Um, he is a creation of Tony Stark. Is it possible he pops up in Armor Wars and is like, I see you're making lots of armor. I was once something like, you know, there's there's so many places where you could put him, but 
none of them feel like the right place in the way that She-Hulk feels like the right place for Samuel Stearns. So I'm just, mm -hmm. I'm really, I'm really curious. Yeah. I maybe feel we're like not there yet. Maybe I don't this think is we're a question of Avengers 5 and that's, it's just too far ahead. Maybe. Cause let's just like, cause it looks like we're looking at crushing mm -hmm. Wanda some more. So, and then we keep vision in the background as to like, you know, we'll, we'll throw you yeah. alone. Yeah. Well, that maybe. sounds fair. He's right now. He's just living the life and trying to figure out what all those sitcoms what like what they meant he's like oh that's what i was doing uh this next one we're staying on the one division train here but this next one has me very excited and this question is what's the deal with the dark hold people i mean come on what's going on oh man i am so excited for the dark hold there's an infinite number of possibilities that this could bring up. I'm hoping, I'm hoping it kicks off kind of the Midnight Suns and gets really supernatural. Um, there is actually a, a group of Darkhold users and they kind of awaken, you know, hell spawns like, like Mephisto and, and minions like Mep minions that serve under, you know, Mephisto, that kind of thing. So I personally, I think that narrative will go into introducing a Mephisto-like experience, whether it be Mephisto himself or some sort of demon-like character like Blackheart. Maybe uh, not. Like, maybe not. Could be wrong. Oh, well, no, I'm not saying that you're wrong. I just think that because if with Morbius, we're finally tapping into more supernatural and I'm hoping we go into like the blade, into blade. One can only oh, we're hope. going so, to Blade. Blade's coming. Blade's coming no matter what. <laughs> I'm so excited. I can't wait. So I don't feel like that's going to... I don't know. I feel like... I, I feel like very much like Vision. This doesn't entirely fit just yet. I don't know. Because I think the sword... I think this uh, Black Knight sword is tied into the Darkhold, to be honest Ooh. with you. They crave uh, like dark, like oh, um, Black Knight's sword <clears throat> craves death and blood, and and it's kind of I think it's going to call to something, and and Darkhold will be a part of that experience, and I think that's why I think that's why a lot of fan theories I've been seeing from like other sources, everyone's hinting at the Midnight Suns because it also this also could play into Moon Knight's Conchu, which the which at the time of this recording, the trailer just came out this week. It looks super amazing. Yeah. But I think Khonshu being a uh, spiritual god of justice will have to do something against the Darkhold and, and awaken Khonshu's champion, which is Moon Knight, to stop this whole thing. So I, th I think that's where that story's coming from. Do we know enough of that world to really build on it? Not that much, but I think that's where the building blocks are coming. I personally think artifact wise, the dark hold and the sword are going to, are going to work together in some well, way. Shape. On uh, the list of unsolved mysteries way further down on the list. One of them is what's the connection between blade and the legend of the black Knight? And I think you just answered that one for us. Cause that makes total sense. They're, they are part, that is another vein of gold. Yeah that has not been touched yet. So they're yeah. really starting to uncover it and be like, hey, we've got Michael Morbius, we've got all this, we've got all that, let's start digging through that and get to some juicy supernatural things, which may even lead to Ghost Rider again, hopefully. Oh yes. no, please. <laughs> I'm hoping Constantine. He's, he's DC. Yes, Constantine would be <laughs> Oh fuck! Oh no! Sorry, Elsa Bloodstone. Elsa Bloodstone. Is now I'm hoping thing. it is Constantine so that we get Elsa a DC Bloodstone. crossover, and you're just like, "Yay, DC is the best!" Oh my god, I would live. I would you almost, live. Yeah, I you almost got me in that trap, but there is there is a Constantine like character, and and Johnny Blaze ends up becoming a Constantine like character for Marvel um, when he loses <clears> Ghost Rider. <throat> he becomes like he becomes like the magician. The, like he well he comes like the expert of hellfire is like the way they okay. kind of describe it so he becomes that but there is a character who's like constantine and her name's elsa bloodstone and she's like she's she's kind of like your van helsing of marvel which is pretty bad okay um but that being said i i do think that 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 blade the sword and the dark hold are all going to be a narrative in some way shape or form it's going to start that 
that vein into that gold you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Um, So I think we're going to see, I I think the only other Midnight Sun character I think that we need to see is, um, is the the runaways uh, girl, old what's her face, uh, whose name escapes me at the moment because I haven't watched enough of the runaways. Uh, but I also want to see, and it also brings in Cloak and Dagger. It could also bring in, um, I do want to see Ghost Rider make a comeback. I think his story's not really done. I think there's a lot in the Marvel world he can do. Do I want to see Nick Cage reprise his role? Uh, I don't know. I don't know if he fits the tone anymore that MCU is delivering. I think I'm hoping that the Ghost Rider is just someone that appears and then disappears, or maybe just doesn't come up at all. Yeah. I think, well, no, I think he could be like a Boba Fett like character. I don't think he needs like a, I don't think he needs a main story, but I think, okay. he, I think he could, like you said, like he could appear and intervene in something or like to see the last <clears throat> moment and then just fail. Yeah. You know what I mean? That would be kind of cool. Only because we've had already the, where do you know who the Ghost Rider is? We don't know. Maybe need Ghost more. Rider, specifically the Cage yeah. Ghost Rider, needs a Ragnarok. It just nice to come back and get Ragnarok. You, ooh, you know, I think I found a way to tie in everything we're oh. talking about here. Hold oh my on. god, Ryan, no. Bear with me Let's here. see. Let's see genius. Let's see this. Let's genius. I think we can, because everyone's begging for a House of M story. Like a legit yes. Wanda, just no more mutants, like wipe out the whole thing. But it's reverse. I think it's, she's going to create mutants. And... And in this process, she's going to use the dark hold, and the the call the sword is going to be a part of it as an instrument to like consume innocent lives, kind of thing, to a point where she could resurrect the vision or think she's resurrecting the vision, and also getting her family. And then in the end, Wanda becomes the villain, and the Midnight Suns have to stop Wanda. I can dig it. I know it would be I know it would be boss to like make Wanda like this like symbol this this the symbol of power and strength and she should be but her story is so much lost and stuff I want to see her get twisted like I want to see her get evil and she was I close. know she has a really tragic story Wanda has probably one of the most tragic stories of a lot of the Marvel characters mm-hmm. and I really want her i like want her to have a happy ending because in her comic book life she does not get one. Oh my god no i know woman gets- I, I want that disney ending too for her but it's just so much juicier to see her turn evil like i feel like but she's, she's never like starting you know like consciously evil she's yeah. always being manipulated by everybody else like yeah. there's so much sorrow with wanda and like her her pain really allows her to have people really use her all the time yeah i think that's why i i love her character so much because she's just such a tragic tra- such mm-hmm. an incredibly tragic character that you f- you feel for her it's like you understand why she does these things yeah like and a lot of the times they're fucking yeah. accidents but the i always forget the name of the well, town woodsbury well, that, that was an accident like that was yes. completely unintentional and then it happened and she's like well i'm gonna ride this oh. train because it's comfortable and i need that right now yeah. yeah, I mean, in the end, you could still have her be like a very strong character, and she's demonstrated time and time again like epic heroic moments, like when she like freaking rips out Ultron's heart. Give me more mm-hmm. scenes like when she nearly like wrecks Thanos. Oh my god, I love that scene! Like when she's just like, "You took everything from me." He's like, "I don't even know who you are." Like, <laughs> it's such a good moment. Like, oh man, does that make you feel for her? Like, oh, yes. I want to rip this punk apart. Did he just say that? Did he just? And I don't even know. Like, I don't know. I think if White Vision exists, that means she's getting a happy ending. If there's a White Vision, yeah. that's what I'm playing on to. She's getting a happy ending. She has. Yeah. She just has to. But but if that's the case, then maybe she leads the Midnight Suns into whatever yes. dark problem that's pulling her in. It could even be Nightmare. It could be Blackheart. It could be Mephisto. It could be uh, any number of those people. Um, could even be Doctor Doom. Who knows, right? Like whoever, like Doctor Doom could take the dark hold and decide to rewrite the whole MCU world, and then it's up to her, Midnight Suns, to go and try and stop this. Could be. Could well, be. We don't have concrete don't dates on a lot of stuff yet, but 
from the looks of things, it really looks like before we see Black Knight again, before we see Blade again, we are seeing Agatha House of Harkness. And that is a yes. great place to sort of open these questions up a little bit and maybe flip through a few pages of that book. Uh, there's a part of my brain, and I don't really understand how it works, it just works this way, that I get really excited and really pleased when things are color-coded. I just love that. So when WandaVision comes along mm -hmm. and you've got your red magic and your blue magic and your purple magic, and we see that one little shot of the book and it's covered in orange magic, that gets my motor running in ways I can't properly describe in a PG-13 way. So I, mm. I want to, I, I want them to really dive into that and be like, okay, there's a reason Agatha's magic is purple. She's evil. There's a reason uh, that Wanda's magic is red. She's magnificent. She's better than everybody else. Now there's a reason why this book is orange. And if that's Mephisto, then that's just the cherry on the Sunday, as far as I'm concerned. Well, here's the other thing, though, is that we the next we see Wanda, and man, I actually hope Elizabeth Olsen keeps getting casted and and, and Wanda gets more screen time because, honestly, I think, I, again, I, I think that because we're seeing her in Multiverse of Madness and she also has, what's her name, America Chavez, uh, I think that um, she could finally try to find a world where, you know, she could have to find Vision and then the both of them go with uh, America Chavez into a universe where their kids exist. And mm -hmm. thus, an evil villain could be the opposing force in preventing that from happening and, you know, solving some things there. I keep forgetting that mm -hmm. those kids are still around. Like they're, they, uh... Well, they, they are and they aren't, right? Like, they don't, they don't, they, they don't exist in the current MCU world that we have. But I think America could be the reason, like she could open a world where they did exist. Yeah, and I think they want, like Feige and company wants to bring them back. I feel like that's a thing that they weren't just there mm -hmm. to be in that show and that's it. Uh, all right, I like these ideas, tying up the dark hold with lots of good stuff. Uh, I hope you're listening, Kevin. In the meantime, let's move on to one that might be a bit simpler. And I think both of you already have pretty strong ideas of the answer here. Who? was Sharon Carter talking to on the phone? I'm going to say, I'm going to say it right now. Anna called it. Anna called it. Anna freaking called it. Because when we talked about who, was, who she was on the phone, Anna was like, Anna was like, yo, it's the kingpin. And here we are. It has kingpin to be. In the world. It has to be. Anna, it you know how badly I want you to be right. So I am, I am on team Anna as far as this is concerned. Oh my God. I really hope so. It has, like... That man has so much control. It, I just, I, I don't know any other way how to introduce him. It just would make more, so much sense. The only reason why it's like, I think it's so cemented that it is him I, is that first of all, in No Way Home and spoilers, you've been warned, but at this point, if you're not, if, if you haven't seen it, then you, then you clearly don't care about spoilers at this point. I have one student um, who, who got but, shafted by her friends and couldn't go. So if you're listening, you know who you are. Spoilers. <laughs> but other than that, Ryan's right. You already know by now. Spoilers. Yeah. Yeah. So she has some. The internet. <laughs> yeah, the internet probably done a lot of the damage already. Absolutely. Um, Kim Kardashian posted uh, on her Instagram. Dumb, dumb. Like, are you what kidding me? What a dumb dumb. That, uh, all right. What a dumb. <laughs> to be fair to her, she posted it like last week. The movie's been <laughs> out. So yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It, you got nobody it, to blame, man. Yeah. Um, so, okay. So Norman confirmed in no way home that he said he went and tried to find himself. There was no Norman Osborn in the MCU and there was no Oscorp. So already that eliminates like the 50, 50 chance that it's, that yeah, it's he was Norman the next big uh, choice. So literally has it. Yeah. He, he would be, he would be the only next big choice. I'd be, I'd be beyond surprised if it was someone like Ross, which doesn't make any sense because the guy has government access anyway. So why would yeah. he need someone like the, the power broker to give him all this access to weapons and stuff when Kingpin is on the outside? Now, the other thing is, is that D'Onofrio has been pretty political in a good way, trying to settle Marvel fans' expectations as, the, as to his re return. Um, and he said that this is the Kingpin from Daredevil. This is the exact same kingpin from Daredevil. 
this hasn't changed anything his story's still the same all that's there so if that's true and he even admitted he said the reason why he's in the mcu world and and what he's doing right now is he's trying to regain his empire thus he has a he would obviously have someone who's a power broker and if the avengers were causing as much problems as they were he'd be a person to be like we need to we need to bring this we need to get access to all this stuff so and he's a powerful scary scary ass man Oh, absolutely. He would be the best villain to have in, in this iteration of the MCU. Yeah. Incredible. He is like no other because he's an unbelievably intelligent, patient, wealthy, multiple streams of income. I mean, all nefarious. But I just like he's and honestly, the best version of Kingpin that I've seen in a really long time, like an incredible Kingpin Daredevil. I, I love... um. I love that actor anyways, because he has such intensity without having to be necessarily outwardly very aggressive. So I think he did an excellent job proving that Fisk is a, is not someone you should reckon with just not, not only physically, but mentally, like he's not. Wow. And done. I think he's not only, like you said, Anna, he's not only the best version of Kingpin we've had in a long time. The very nature of this character is he's the only version we've had in a very long time. Kingpin is not a go-to guy. For screenwriters they don't rely on him a lot like even if he pops up in a video game he's there as like a cameo and then he's gone uh the, the 90s cartoon was really the only time until daredevil came along that they made him like a mainstay so because he's such a left of center character that's one of the things that appeals to me about him uh so to use him in this way that is so powerful to me it it's something that they're just great at like the Guardians of the Galaxy. You use, you use people nobody cares about. Boom. They're everybody's favorite now. Uh, so to take that and apply it to this guy who's been my favorite since I was like eight, that is, it just feels like something that they're good at doing and they have been doing and will continue to do. So there, if he is yeah. not this power yeah. broker, I, I don't know what other avenue they could take that would be as interesting. The only the only other reason that I also think it's the kingpin pin, kingpin is because normally Marvel you have you're a standard villain like your alien wizard or I can't remember the three big was like robot. alien wizards robots, yeah. and robots. robots yeah so alien wizards are robots and then you have kind of like the like Hydra you have the the financial backing the money we haven't had a, a money villain in a yeah. while. So I think someone that's essentially funding a lot of these villains makes it makes sense, and it would make sense for it to be the kingpin. Like it, it just it, like in terms of if we go what, what what Ryan is saying, like what we've seen from Marvel, Marvel, that is same equation would apply. You have your robots, wizards, and aliens, and then you need your money to and fund is, your robots, wizards, and aliens. And this is a guy who wants to always equalize the playing field. That's that's been mm -hmm. kingpin's role, like even as a villain, like he he will sit at the top. But the whole point is, is he wants to like level the playing field. So mm -hmm. like um, with Daredevil, he fought fire with fire. Like he found, he found Bullseye and essentially turned Bullseye literally into a Daredevil, thus equalizing mm -hmm. the playing field. In the end, he lost, but that was not the point, right? So in this case, it makes sense that he has this power broker and this power broker is like, yo, these superheroes are problems because they're preventing him from running the the being the leader that he sees his himself crime as syndicate exact his crimes but he controls it right the whole idea is he doesn't he probably doesn't see himself as a criminal he sees himself as someone who controls crime because he mm -hmm. sees himself as a person who can lead and mm -hmm. if this world is getting out of control with all these superheroes which they are thus the sokovia accords then who better to equalize the playing field than him finding someone who can help him get all the access to this gear and stuff so he can literally fight fire with fire and say, look, these heroes are a problem. I have now, you know, created the Thunderbolts, let's let's just say, like, you know, using Zemo. I have taken these people and these people can and control heroes and we can finally get back to living in the world that we want to live in. You know, you and think Kingpin, Kingpin sits on top and he wins. You think he would fund? Oh shit! What's um from Falcon and Winter Soldier, um, the not the the well, Baroness? Yeah, exactly, and oh, that's yeah. Contessa? That's the next mystery. Yeah. So let's, that's a perfect segue on it. 
because what is she recruiting the for? Contessa. And I think this leveling the playing field is a perfect solution to yeah. this too. Maybe and the king king is behind that. Oh, it's perfect. And it's perfect like uh what's the word? Um yeah. propaganda. It's perfect propaganda for him to sit again on top of the world because he he talked about in Daredevil. I've been watching Daredevil season 1 all over again and it's like the best thing ever because technically it's MCU now, so you got to you got to brush up people. Um uh, but but in in the MCU, he talks about he wanted to destroy not destroy, but he wanted to essentially, he wanted to, um, yeah, essentially deconstruct the city and and rebuild it in his image because he thinks he's the best person to do so. And well, the better, whole and yeah, who better sorry, to do sorry. that is the, yeah, no, no, it's who better to do that than him and to have his own Avengers in his back pocket. Yes, do- that's the whole thing in Daredevil where he believes he is right. He never sees himself as wrong. The daredevil is in his way of what he wants to do, of living his life. It's like, you are, you are like in that last fight, it's like, it's you, you are doing this. He never saw himself as evil and he still doesn't. He's still a hundred, he feels he's justified because he's not the one pulling the trigger. He's not the one doing the murdering, the killing or the stealing. He's only the mastermind behind it. So it only makes sense for him to create these individuals in his own image, to have his own propaganda and say, like, my heroes are better than your heroes. We're already planting doubt on, a doubt on Spider-Man, uh, the Hulk, uh, doubt on, well, now that we lost uh, Captain America and we lost Tony Stark, what the world believe were the true leaders of the Avengers. Maybe the Avengers credibility because, and again, Wanda. We have, we've lost vision. So maybe this is going to be a, my heroes versus your heroes. Who's your, who's your salvation? Maybe I'm your salvation, not them. Like they've all let you down. I mean, we've all, we've seen them all kind of have a huge fallout and we've lost leadership. So, I mean, the, the Avengers are technically kind of vulnerable right now. Yeah. Yes. A hundred percent. And, and it's, it's one of those things. It's like, it's, it's perfectly satirical too, because, because King Quinn could easily, let's say he runs for Senator again or whatever. and like, mm-hmm. does that whole angle. Then people could say like, Oh, you know, you recruited uh, or sorry, couldn't help but notice, let's say somehow you tie him into the U S agent and he'd be like, no, you're getting the facts wrong. Like he could easily change the narrative. Like, look at these heroes. You praise Tony Stark, a drunk wreck, you know, almost caused the world to explode two times kind of thing he's like look at captain america flawed all this stuff you know what i mean like uh he he protected a he protected um he protected his friend who's a convicted criminal right Mm -hmm. like he could easily change the narrative on all these heroes and he's gonna be like if you support me i will make the city you've been wanting to have and it's it's so perfect. It's going to be the Lex Luthor that people wanted in DC. Yes, and, and that is everyone. what we deserve. Oh, and actually, God. a mastermind, too. Actually a genius. Bold this time. Uh, yes. Look, I've I've been <laughs> saying this to nauseating effects since we started Infinity Rewatch, where there's only so many times we can see them fight an army of robots or an army of aliens or whatever. I want to see a team of heroes versus a team of villains, and we. Like this, this is the gonna... best place for it, right? Like this is the like the Black yes. Order, kind of, but it didn't feel like what I had in mind. Like it didn't feel like team versus team. Like they were just kind of there backing up their homie. Or, uh, or, or maybe we get something different. Maybe we get like um, a different iteration of what is it called? The Endless War, the uh, Eternal in- War. It's the oh never Infinity War. <laughs> oh damn it, that's DC. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Shit. Infinite crisis. Anna, is this your way of? Are you subtly <laughs> telling us that we should start another podcast? Because I'd be down too. No, but you be scared. There are so many parallels. They kind of could rip each other off in some way, right? So it's like a little sometimes a little fucking confusing. Uh, but no. it, I do kind of like that idea of like that they because again we're we're look we're we're talking about an identity crisis here because. Um, U.S. agent still does. Oh, he's not U.S. agent yet. I can't remember, like the fake mm-hmm. Captain America. He still doesn't believe he's wrong. So again, we're we're facing individuals that don't believe they're wrong, that they're one hundred percent justified, that they have a goal to achieve, and that these individuals kept them from achieving that goal. So it'd be interesting to see maybe not necessarily 
bad versus good, but maybe ideology versus ideology. But we even have some Avengers saying like, maybe they are right. Maybe we aren't doing as well as we think we are, right? Because yeah. we've lost a lot of leadership and a lot of those OG Avengers. So we have maybe younger Avengers that are still kind of finding their own morality, their own abilities. So maybe it isn't what we think it is, good versus bad. Maybe something a lot more yeah. complicated than that, right? Because that's what we're seeing. A lot of loss of identity, a loss of a goal, like not knowing who you really are and kind of trying to stick to an ideology. Maybe Wanda gets told something that Doctor, maybe Doctor Strange tells her, you know, you'll never have your family back. And then maybe she's told that exactly. she can't. And maybe the kingpin is going to be her magnet. And he is the kind of person who tries to give you what you want, right? No, more mutants, more mutants, more mutants. Martin, make me, oh, holy fuck, could you imagine she asked, she, he asked her to make him a fucking army of goddamn mutants. <gasps> <gasps> Anna, Anna yeah. takes the cake on that one. That was. Oh my god! Uh, Please remember this because I'm gonna lose my mind. Could you imagine it, the King Ping ends up oh, recruiting it, Wanda? All she wants is her family. If he and if he funds, you know, like wizards, mutants, and robots. Yeah. He. It, it's. I it's mean, great he could, storytelling. He could, Oh my God. The thing is like, we're, I, I think because it's not, and in this iteration of the MCU, we're seeing so much ambiguity and a lot of motivation for a lot of these characters that it feels like it's left up in the air for these people to really influence. Cause we saw, again, going back to the equation of, you know, the MCU, Tony Stark was that influence. He's the influence that started the Avengers. We lost that heart. So who is the influence? You know, that's why we're kind of, now we have a new Captain America from the Falcon, but is he, how, how are we going to, how are we going to control White Vision? What about Wanda? Maybe even the Fantastic Four, who knows? Maybe these are people that are lost, right? People that are lost, that are uh, reluctant heroes that are forced in the situation. And maybe they're told that if you do this, I'll help you, I'll help you, maybe I'll help you not be the thing. Yeah. And it's a very easy trap to follow. Like if I was approached by Elaine Bennis and she offered me stuff, I'd be like, yeah, whatever you yes. say, Elaine, I'm on board. Like, I'm not going to say no As? to her. So he, if, if she is in fact in league with Big Willie, that's a great synergy they've got going on. I think so. I, we no, need a I, Hydra. No, I, I, well, not only do we need a Hydra and, and, you know, I absolutely agree with that angle is like, we need, a money boss like we need a street level you know villain kind of thing and it's perfect because kingpin could be the villain throughout the entire disney plus series like he could he could easily be a majority of like he could be the thanos of disney plus you know what i mean like mm -hmm. it, it's so beautifully done but the other thing is is that um with kingpin uh oh man where was i going with this is that uh oh my god i'm totally just my brain just totally stepped over it oh with the uh, with the uh, contessa is he had wesley so mm -hmm. he needs a new wesley because mm -hmm. wesley's, wesley's dead. dead so who better to do that who who better to fill that role than uh than contessa well take take that idea of the money oh, and hang on to that because the next mystery involves money um and it's it's a little bit uh, controversial right now because there's so many factors going into it, but it's who has bought Avengers Tower? Who owns this damn building? You know, I was gonna I was gonna easily argue the Fantastic Four, but I have a better outcome. Kingpin. Kingpin owns yeah. that tower. He is the anti stone yeah. Tony Stark. He is like this is Tony Stark, but anti Tony Stark. Yep. I just, I, I like, it just makes perfect sense. God, I hope I'm right. Could you fucking imagine? I will die. I mean, something entirely different. I'm like, holy shit. <laughs> just because you need to remake it, right? You need your Hydra. You need, you need like, you need that Tony. Yeah, so maybe it's, perfect. Be... it's perfect. It's perfect. It's Bizarro be Avengers. Oh, Bizarro oh, Avengers God. makes me so Bizarro happy. Bizarro Avengers. I love that. that. Yeah. Oh my God, Bizarro Avengers. Bizarro Avengers. But, but also it answers one of the biggest biggest things with mcu right now is if you try to do another avengers experience right now like you try to rebuild the avengers and do that then then people are then you're gonna lose the impact you made with endgame but mm -hmm. if you started with a dark avengers 
and built up an evil group who mm-hmm. constantly wins one-on-one battles <clears throat> with the heroes that you root for, then you're going to want a new mm-hmm. Avengers. Exactly. And it's, and it's you, perfect. And if you think about it, the Avengers right now, there's no Avengers. Because Wanda yeah. has exiled herself. Yeah. Doctor Strange. He's sipping Doctor Strange coffee right in now? his well, Doctor no lobby. Yeah, Spider Man yeah. does not exist. He doesn't. He's not. He doesn't exist right now in the MCU. Uh, who do we have left? Okay, we don't know what's happened. Well, we know that um, Captain Marvel's out in space, saving the rest of space. Mm-hmm. Bruce is yeah. still Avengering. It's really just so. Bruce. Who do we have left? It's honest. It's Bruce. Maybe Captain War Machine. America, and War Machine is still involved. I think. Yeah, War Machine. That's it. We have a so. we have a skeleton crew, right? So I mean, th- that's we don't have anyone that's leading, and I don't think Falcon is quite there yet. So I mean, they have to really get to a point where they want to rebuild themselves mm-hmm. as a team. And that's sorry, go ahead. And we don't we don't have that. No, sorry, and we don't have that right now. We just have characters that are kind of lost, that are really lost in their direction, and they can be influenced yes. by anybody. So maybe it is what Ryan is saying, where we have a building of a dark, like a dark Avengers, bizarre Avengers, and then you are now having to scramble to figure out, like, how do we build a team? Who are we? What, are, like, what do we do? Yeah. Especially right? when this no giant, Tony. powerful, well, it, super energy building that Tony bought now has Fisk's name on it. It's like seeing, you know, Trump yeah. on top of the the Empire State Building all of a sudden. It's like, oh, damn, this sucks. Well, you know, we're also missing a, a scientist. I mean, yes, Banner is a scientist, but it's not, it's not, not right. Tony, not an inventor. So, I mean, this is where Reed Richards would be able to come in. He, he would be, I mean, actually, this would really great op- opening for Reed Richards because we have someone that is a scientist, someone that understands, um, what is it, space rays? Kind of like gamma rays, but not gamma rays. Cosmic. Cosmic. Cosmic rays akin to gamma rays but not entirely so i mean he actually just gets hit by a guy named ray ray i just feel like there's there's there has to be there that's the what's missing right we don't have like we don't have the resource we don't have the we don't have the money essentially we don't have the backing behind the the avengers so it's Mm. like who's gonna do that who's gonna be that leader who's gonna be that uh, creator because right now we have a broken team we do. We do. And Dark Avengers is an actual thing. There was a comic book story called The Dark Avengers and Norman Osborn becomes a senator in the States. So I, I think because we don't have a Norman Osborn, easily they're going to do an MCU the formula no. and give it Kingdom. Could you imagine if he becomes a senator? It's Oh, it's over. Oh my god. That, I'm that would be amazing. I'm something of a senator myself. <laughs> uh, uh, you guys are making it very easy for me to segue through these mysteries, though, uh, because you're talking about building up a team, and it's brilliant because this next mystery involves why could Wong possibly want to be training the Abomination? What's going on there? Yeah, Maybe the Hulk one. doesn't want to be the Hulk anymore. That's very real. Especially if he's training his, his we cousin. Saw... Be like, good, take my job. I'm done with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Some, like, we, right? Because it's, he, if we, the last time we saw him, Sanchi, he was a human, right? Mm-hmm. And he had his arm in a sling. So maybe he doesn't want to be, maybe the Hulk was like, I cannot, I will never forgive you for doing what you did to me and I don't want to come out anymore. Maybe. Right? Because the Hulk is, is a separate, that... still a separate entity. Yeah, I think there's a, di- a huge instability with the Hulk right now. That's why I'm saying there could be a regression where, like, he could could be subduing the Hulk inside of you him. You sold and me. That man. rage is just gonna build out. You know, I'm you sold me, you, bud. It, it's it's a good story. I think it's I think it's gonna be a good story because, like, what better moment to have than that moment of perfection when you finally have everything and just one little match sets the whole thing off. And I think oh, that's shit. perfect. And on top of that, if if Anna, you're setting it up really well because if that's true, then it's perfect that they're training the abomination because because again they can't rely on Hulk being their strong guy. They well, need someone else. No. So it makes sense to look at it even from a cautionary standpoint. Okay, yeah, maybe we lost Hulk as our strong guy, but what if this is a case of Hulk and Banner are so unstable 
that it's not a matter of he's not on our team anymore. It's a matter of this guy is an accident waiting to happen. And I want to have an accident of equal strength on standby that I control in case I need to push Mm -hmm. back. Mm. Yeah. Which leads to some, because it's Wong and strange leads to some Illuminati slash planet Hulk slash world war Hulk kind of situation. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Good. It could very well be. It's, I'm actually interested to see if, again, I think like kind of we're getting a Masters of Evil slash Dark Dark Avengers kind of thing. Because like, what if some mysterious figure put like Abomination on a rehabilitation program to kind of mm-hmm. get him to get ba- like get back into the world? Because again, you know, with the perfect world of the Avengers, they want to be able to bring those villains back in you know as good people and that person was kingpin kingpin probably put him on the rehabilitation thing and he's putting his like chess pieces in place to to eliminate any sort of obstacles that he has i'm but how how would he end up with long though i it's no i think that like i think that again if Kingpin knows the who the Avengers are, which he seems to do. He seems to know, and he knows Doctor Strange is an Avenger, mm-hmm. and I don't think he cares about the magic stuff. I think he just cares that like they they could be an obstacle. I need to I need to eliminate that obstacle. Mm. Let me okay. let me build on top of your sandcastle, Ryan. I'm going to add a turret to this castle and put a flag in it. Build it. I'm I'm trying to build it here, and I think we're all I think we're all really collaborating on this. You're right. We did. We, we just wrote we, a script. We essentially we just, just wrote did. a script in an hour. You're right. Kingpin knows who all the Avengers are because everybody does. They are a very public face. And he is going to one by one find ways individually to deal with each of them because, you know, information on them is so readily available. There's only one Avenger. No, not, not even Vision. Vision. Not even Vision. There's only one Avenger. That's where my vision went. That's where my vision went. That's There's where my vision one. went. There's one the Avenger the and one Avenger only <laughs> whose identity is not known to anybody, including the Kingpin, because guess what? He just erased everybody's memory about himself. And who do we want to see fight Kingpin more than anybody else? Spider-Man! Oh my god, he won't have his cool suit. He's got his beautiful blue and red suit now. It's all shiny. Oh man, he's gonna get crushed. <laughs> such a small guy <laughs> oh that's what i want that's i would love it would oh love my it. god guys it's the it's the kingpin that's where white vision went he's just curating that's what the contest is doing she's curating mm. her dark marvel knights that is what she's doing she has white vision well, I, I i like all of this I now love it. the answer to the next mystery is probably not kingpin but you guys are both very creative so maybe you'll find a way to put him in there and i will not mind at all uh the mystery is where did Wenwu's magic rings come from, and who slash what are they transmitting to? Yeah. Oh, man. Maybe, I, I... um... Sauron? No. <laughs> what, what, oh, shoot. Who are the... The Guardians? No, I don't think it's the Guardians. Why not? Do you mean I the, mean... um... The, uh... uh Celestials? Is that who you're thinking of? Okay. That, that yes. does yeah, yes. make sense. Uh, Only because it's like, we, I'm, it's yeah. old, right? It's very old. It's signaling to somewhere in space or into the ether. And they're, I don't know. I don't like, maybe they belong to somebody and they got left well, behind makes, on Earth. Well, that makes like. It all tracks. It all reads. I mean, we were all thinking the same thing. We were in the theater. Uh, we were thinking of Galactus and how you know something calls him to Earth. And this is a DC podcast. At the end of the day, the mother boxes ping Dark Side. We all know that they tell Dark Side to come to Earth. No. So, <laughs> could you imagine we have a crossover? I just saw. God. If these are just little round mother boxes that uh, no. you can wear and look damn fashionable doing so, then calling. Galactus doesn't seem far-fetched to me at all. 
okay originally i agree with you but i think i think on a on a man you're you're winning this one uh i think that i think they're actually gonna bring back the eternals i, I really do it has only because think about it when he expanded it it reminded me a little bit of oh, i can't remember his character the the builder Bastos. when he would build stuff and he yeah. would yes when he would do the, the mapping, he would have similar rings. I mean, and they look kind of like the rings, the bracelets mm-hmm. he was making when he was first constructing them. It gave me that. So maybe he made it or a, an iteration of him made it and it got left behind somewhere and, in Asia. And then on top of that, they also shot projectiles. And that's what Congo does. He shoots projectiles. Right? It totally oh, looks man. like one of their weapons. So yes it, yeah and, and if it's alien be, weaponry if it's supposed to be really old i think it's perfect and and it honestly that that kind of makes me go you know what now i get why the eternals was told like why that story yes. was told. because if you didn't do that if you didn't tell that story in shang chi then again if you if you think galactus then it makes you go, well, why Why did we tell this epic eternal story? It doesn't make, like, it would just be a random one-off unless you were building something that would involve the ter- the Eternals later. And and that fits that puzzle piece perfectly. Oh, yeah. I think I think Anna's onto something with that. Imagine if they're keys. Maybe they're keys. They could be keys to, you know, we have, a, we have, a, we have the Eternals. The Eternals still mm-hmm. exist. They exist somewhere in a locked box, so maybe these are keys. Could be. I I buy it. I honestly, or a tracking I, beacon to go back think, to the ship, not the ship. Well, or... no, because that makes sense. Because the they their memories were erased and they were sent away. So if the beacon was activated, that could bring back the ship to come back to Earth. Because like Fastos could have known that something like that could happen, and they needed a way back. Yeah, the connection to the Eternals and the Celestials is too perfect especially considering that one movie followed the other uh like it's too perfect to not yes be because how how did the eternals end up we leave off with the, with harry styles nike he's not what he's well it, it's like the the god nike but i can't remember what his star name fox. is his name is star, fox. star okay so um what did he say to them he was saying uh, I can't. I don't. I can't remember if he if he they was asking them to leave because there was another mission or no, another. But there was something. He's like, we have to go. It's not. I can't. I can't remember. But it would be interesting if maybe they have to leave because the beacon. The beacon is right, on. and that's one of the other mysteries. Mm-hmm. The beacons are lit. Middle the beacons are lit. Go go <laughs> um, the the one of the other mysteries is you know why is Star Fox showing up? Uh, is it because you know? He's a fox in the stars, and Nintendo's going to sue somebody. Uh, like, why is he there? And you're right, Anna. I can't remember what he says. He just kind of flirts with Angelina, and then let me they end. Google it. Like, I don't think he's there to say like, "I need your help," right? He's just like, "Hey, what's up?" He says something. I thought he said, "Let's talk about my brother." Somebody said, "Because that's when everyone's like, remember. oh, it's Thanos." I'm pretty sure that was like something along those know. lines. So if he's there to talk about that, let me see. It could very well um, initiate something ring related. Arrows. I don't know. It, the the whole Star Fox thing might be my least favorite part of Eternals. If we're being honest, it's. Uh, well, I mean, in terms of end credit sequences, just hearing Blade's voice oh, completely dwarfed anything Harry Styles was going to do. A million percent. Uh, so. Yeah. He uh, what's his, Eros? That's his that's his uh, his god name there. Yes, Eros. Yeah, I really don't understand the point of him. I understand the point of him from a real world standpoint, but I don't understand the point of him in the story. So, but so like right. this is a good place to connect that because he's a dot that's not connecting to anything else. Right. Okay, sorry. I, I want to see. I'm I'm looking so I can s- read what he says. Because closed captions are on. Are you, you're on Disney Plus right now, aren't you? I <laughs> know. Uh, I'm I'm here. I just want to see what he says, 
See if we get a hint. He's. If you, oh god damn it! No, you just not, look they're... very carefully yeah. at, on his glasses right now. If you guys watch the video, you can actually watch Colonel <laughs> through her glasses. <laughs> You'll never copyright I'm... us now. <laughs> god damn it! For Thanos, we do some God damn it! I. I... I just want to see if there's a transcript. Because I wish I remember what he said. I don't remember what he said. Like says, Hypedia but has an answer here. I was about. It, to it say would be. What. Let's see. Um, but I mean, like, is there? Is that too far fetched to think that maybe he knows about the rings? Because I think it no. tracks. N- only because think about it this way like we had we had a beeper right that was the yeah. beacon for captain marvel so how are these rings not any different than a beeper that's kind of reaching out to celestial right. beings right um oh yeah. okay it's like is it the rings almost look like keys to me they because they, it, it i don't know yeah. i don't know why they look like they do they, they feel, feel like, like there's keys. another thing mm-hmm. that they go with that we haven't seen yet um, yes. i think i found what he says it's not verbatim it's just like the wikipedia sort of plot but i think what happened is fina yeah fina druig and makari they went to go find other eternals on other planets that was their goal and when he shows up when arrow shows up he's just like i'm gonna help you so he's there to help them find eternals he says he says and i quote we're here to help your friends are in a lot of trouble and we know where to find them so clearly, the beacon. It's the beacon. Hand the down. Beacon. The beacon. And that's it. That's it, people. If, and your that friends gives, are in trouble. That gives a whole. That gives a whole relevance to the whole end credit scenes of Shang Chi. Oh my full god! Relevance to the Eternals. Check mark. Boom. We're done. Oh my god, that was awesome! That was awesome. If I could <laughs> light a cigarette. The biggest, the biggest post-credit mystery of all time. And there have to be keys. It has to be a beacon. The beacon has been lit, so th- I mean, it just it. It's only it has to be because we had a beeper and that went to space. Somehow that beeper was strong enough to get to space. So, so why you, would this not? And you could easily change. You could easily change that story into the snap. Cre- uh, sorry, the snap created that whole celestial thing, and they interrupted that. So the celestials create Galactus, send Galactus to kill the planet, and the Eternals and everybody needs to unite to stop Galactus. So here's a question for you: Done. Since it doesn't look like Eternals is going to be its own series, right? It's just like a one and done thing. Where? <laughs> so disappointing. Where do you think this search for beacons, etc.? is going to pop up. Do you think it's more likely in, let's say, Captain Marvel 2 or in Guardians Volume 3? Mm, I would I would argue the Marvels because because apparently Captain Marvel's been off in the deepest parts of space and she's she's got problems that apparently dwarf everything else that's going on in her life. So my guess is she's the one that's probably going to get to the, the mystery quicker than the Guardians will. Maybe she'll realize because she was there to see the rings. It's like they're 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 nothing like I've ever they're nothing I've ever seen before. Not and no alien tech that yes. I've seen before. Yeah. So maybe out there she'll oh this is this looks yeah. familiar. And maybe she runs into the ship. And that's a great yep. thing for her as a character because it does something for her second movie that her first movie didn't have, which was relevance to the overall story. Uh, and I think she needs yes. that. You just see that she's very busy, but you don't see what she's doing. So this would be a really great segue to have her own kind of story and then connect it to Shang Chi and then um, yeah, Eternals. And and it's it kind of and again because again you can't introduce too much with Marvel. Like I, Marvel's pretty smart at not introducing too much. That's why that's why fans go like, oh, we're gonna see Galactus, we're gonna see this, we're gonna see that. Like that happens because again. We want that to happen, but Marvel can't take that time to explain and try to draw all these lines to get people to connect. But it's perfect because if the beacon causes the Eternals to return and Captain Marvel's going out in space to find the Skrulls a home, you know, if you're going to go find a home, you're going to go deep into space. So her chances of finding Eternals and potentially whatever the Eternals may bring, that that's going to be... Guys, why are we all so clever and attractive? How do we keep cracking these mysteries over oh and over? Oh my god. 
It's a gift. You know, you know, in the movie theater, I'm going to lose my mind. If anything we said happens, for the I, next I, six I movies, we're going to keep turning to each other yeah. and being like, oh, <laughs> we're going to be the Leonardo DiCaprio meme. Yeah, no, we're just gonna I going to be doing you know, that the whole time. <laughs> No, you know, I, I, I'm going to say, uh, I, you know, I worry which one of us will sit beside Anna because chances are our arm will be beaten. Like she's like, ah! So actually, if it's the, if the kingpin ends up being the kingpin of everything, I think oh. that's wild. That's, that's an excellent setup. That's just an excellent setup. It should happen. It should happen. I'll, it's I'll the right thing. I'll be standing up blowing it's kisses the right to the thing. screen. Like, I, I'll be too happy. Oh, All right, so... It, it feels, but Ryan is right. Let's. The thing is, like, we have to ensure that the universe stays n- mm. uh, palatable, right? Because it still has to be, you know, it needs to make money. It needs to make sense, and and people need to be able to watch these without having any previous yeah. understanding of the other movies. There's the pace. There's like Loki yes. could have introduced thousands of things, but they kept exactly. they kept it very confined to and Loki's I, story. I really I love like, the pace that yeah. they're going because it's like. When you look at Eternals, yes. yes, it introduced like 13 new characters, but it's 13 characters that I had no idea about or interest in. It's not like, here's Mephisto and Galactus and Magneto. And it's like, it's, it's just 13 randos. And that's great because it's 13 people I get to meet, but I'm still chomping at the bit for these other people that I know are coming. Did <laughs> we need them? Or did they just <laughs> kind of die, and then we got no time? You know, it would it would have really have killed them to make like a ten episode, even six, six six episodes. Like it, it was so disappointing to watch to to have like a, such a complicated like basically space gods. We're introducing that's where we're at. We're introducing space gods, and we got our two hour movie that went nowhere to explain something as complicated as space gods. Okay. I'm going to tell Athena you said that. She's going to be this. Oh, and the thing is, like, that's what frustrates me because, like, Harry Styles and Angelina Jolie are obviously expensive actors. Neither of them had, like, great lines or a significant amount of lines, but they had a good amount of, like, Harry Styles had the airtime at the end, but Angelina Jolie had a lot of close camera shots. She was their moneymaker. She was their, you know, their high paid actress. So it's a little disappointing that instead of, putting the effort into the story they were i don't know it felt kind of like throwaway it felt very throwaway to me which mm-hmm. you know it felt very dc it felt like it was written like dc just let's throw let's throw it away like, here you go you here you watched it okay you get it now See, i like to think of these eternals it as didn't... like seeds that are here for one movie and they don't finish you know they don't follow through on any of them because they are meant to be sprinkled everywhere else and not all together. Like, we won't see all 10 of them together again, but it's like, but you, hey, Cersei's going to show up in, like, Doctor Strange 3 because she's got something important going on there, etc. Like, they're going to be all over the place. Mm. <laughs> I just feel like they could have done better. It, they, 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 because they have. They have done better, and it's disappointing. Because, like, Falcon and Winter Soldier, I would argue, it didn't really need a series. It really didn't. And at least, and it, you know what? It, and the fact that it was, it was still fine. It's still, there was still a story to a tell. And there was, like, a, a chapter to close. So it's disappointing that they didn't really allow for that build. And a lot of the relationships didn't feel organic. It, it felt very forced. And especially when you have such a diverse cast of someone that's hearing impaired and you don't really get to know these individuals. Like... It, they're they're eternals they have lived eternally so we don't get to see any of that we don't get to understand that we see Athena experiencing what looks like PT, like severe ptsd but we get no background in understanding behind that you've created complex characters with complex background but decided to give nothing to the viewer give you something incredibly superficial to not like it, it felt kind of like again we're back to spoon feeding me spoon feeding me because you don't think i'm smart enough to understand what you're trying to tell me and I think that story deserved more time than what it got. Well, I'll take a three-hour cut of that movie, a hundred percent. I'm down. <laughs> Can you imagine we get a four-hour cut? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Did you guys hear it. the Batman is going to be almost three hours, apparently? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 you, do, you do not need to tell that long of a story. Hey, I, like, I, I have been waiting here, guys. for <laughs> the Riddler for a very long time. 
We have had 75,000 hours of the damn Joker. Let me have my three hours of the Riddler, okay? <laughs> you had the Riddler. You had Jim Carrey. And before that, you had the Riddler in the Batman 60s. You had plenty of Riddler. Uh, the, the ratio of Riddler to I Joker is like the ratio. I have no problem sitting through three hours of a story. I've done it for Lord of the Rings. I will do it. If it's a good story, I think it deserves to be three hours. I think if it's, it has something to say, and if it's and it's willing to take its time, because it, Eternals was over two hours and it told nothing. It was over over two hour movies and it said nothing. I learned nothing about these people. Okay, great, thanks. Yeah. Well, if you have a you're, if you have a three hour movie because you're willing to and dedicated to tell the story of these individuals. So, and if it's three hours, maybe we're looking at an entire like an opening of a different DC universe, a yes, rebirth please. of DC. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm hoping. Because if you're willing to put in that amount of effort into a movie, that means you're also going to start including other things. I mean, it's DC needs its own Ragnarok, so maybe this is the start. Exactly. And I mean, as we all know, this is a DC podcast, and we love. There's two things we love here. <laughs> it's King. It's Kingpin and Wonder Woman <laughs> 1984. The love is. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Anna, Anna, Anna has the whole, whole script of Wonder Woman 1984 tattooed to her back. Oh god, it's like a terrible movie. It's literally a carbon copy of the original Wonder Woman. It just they did nothing new. They did nothing new. They just said it in the eighties. Okay, good. All right. So we we have we have a good idea of where the the magical ten rings might have come from and what they might be uh, heading towards. But what about the symbolic ten rings? What about Xia Ling? What are her plans for the ten rings? terrorist group now that she runs the joint i have a feeling that they are going to become the new hand Hmm. that's my theory maybe that works under the kingpin could i don't know because kingpin kind of backfired kingpin kind of betrayed them so they they he has a rocky relationship with him but it could be it could be fixed. Could be. Um, it could be. Well, I mean, if you have enough money, and this is yeah. a new leader now, right? Yeah. She's a brand new leader. Maybe she wants to expand her empire, and the King Ping is the right man to do that. So again, we have your mm-hmm. someone that can wield not can wield the Ten Rings, but obviously has the power of the dragon. Right. I actually, I think that she could. Yeah, I think that that could be her her game. Is like. I'll work with this guy because he'll allow me to expand my empire, but it's still mine. Like it's not, mm-hmm. he, he's going to help me, but it's still, it's still very much mine. But I actually think she might go out and acquire other artifacts. Cause like if she wants to play a symmetry to her father, then she's going to be like, I need to become the most powerful person. So I need to find a power of my own. And she could find something like maybe she, yeah or or maybe we we get her as the iron fist well that's where i'm hoping we go i, I actually i think so i think she would make an incredible I, I iron fist i want to leave the kingpin train in the station for this particular uh mystery because i would i think this is a great place if we're daredevil is back now and that whole thing is canon now great at uh, this situation of her and this group is a perfect opportunity to give us what didn't get the love it deserved, which is the bromance that is Luke Cage and Iron Fist. And to, you know, the cherry and the whipped cream on that is get Jessica Jones and Colleen Wing in there because those ladies are legit. And you bring them into the fold of that story and it's them up against Xia Ling. And that, even if that is a, a Disney Plus show, it doesn't feel like the scales are balanced because Shelley has this power. So you wouldn't get a street level person to go up against her. You'd get people like Jessica Jones and Iron Fist and people, like people who can go toe to toe with her. And that would be a great way to ease these people back in and give them sort of the team love that they deserve. And they kind of got shafted on in Defenders. I feel like... <laughs> I think that isn't, I think that's an, an entire, like a huge possibility, but I think for her character, she has to be more than that. There was 
uh, moments in Shang-Chi where she was looking at the dragon and there have been several, like she was told by her aunt, you have the heart of the dragon or you're part, I can't remember, heart of the dragon or something about the dragon. And that, that comment was specifically to her, I, once from her aunt. And then she was, then she said it to herself when she was like on the dragon, I think. So, I mean, she, I, I feel like in some way, is she not endowed with a power like her brother? I, I, I feel like in some, maybe she'll be a different iteration of the Iron Fist. Right. Well, and that's the thing. The Iron Fist has had yeah. many iterations, like many. It doesn't have to be a fist. I mean, the last we saw of the Iron Fist, I can't, John, what's his name? Not Johnny. Danny, Danny Rand? Danny. Danny. He, it, it was the gun, right? It was the gun. So like the original Iron Fist. And then was she, did she have the fist? Yeah, she Colin had the fist. Wayne, yeah, she had the yeah. sword. Oh, the sword. Yeah. Um, so yeah, no, I agree. I think I actually kind of like that angle. I think they do need to fix Iron Fist and then make yes. it, make it work in the world. And they kind of tease the idea in, in, uh, Shang-Chi. So it could work. I think I, I agree with you guys. You could build with this for sure. Um, because isn't it Kung Lung? She it's, it's Kung Lung or, or no, or it's, a... it's apparently it, they kind of like marvelized it a little bit. There is a world that's similar to Kung Lung, um, that can only be like a- accessed through a certain way. So oh, right, because this is only what, cause there's different planes. This is just yeah. one plane where they hold these, the, um, the soul stealers captive, but there's different yeah. you, like, uh, not universes, but different, I guess, planes of existence that are still part of the same, that are still part of the same. Yes. Place. Yeah. So, so in, in one of the best, like iron fist stories in the comics, it's called the immortal iron fist. And they, there's Kun Lun, but there's also seven other kingdoms that all, that all live on a different or similar plane of existence. And that one of those places is that place where Song Chi was. So they could tie yeah, that That's story a very down. MCU thing. They could, why they would could she not want to explore? Yeah. yeah. Why would she not explore more of her mother's home and like what okay. else it has to offer? Her aunt said, like, this is only this is only one plane where of mm-hmm. other of other places. Oh, yeah. Totally. Why yeah, would she's, she not? she's gonna go. I think she, she's I agree an opportunistic you. lady. She knows, like, she's smart. She knows what to do. She's definitely going to go find those places and see what's there. Yeah, for sure. Because oh. I and I think and the thing is, she knows. She probably knows there's going to be a lot of other people like her father. So she's probably going to be out to to stop them, whatever they may be. Well, now she, there's a power vacuum, right? Because he's mm-hmm. her father's gone, so she has to now establish power and control. How do you do that? Especially yeah, when you, exactly. he was the Ten Rings for so many, a, a millennia, right? In, in uh, infinite amount of power. So now this woman coming into now just real power of money, how do you gain that control back? You need supernatural powers. You need, you need to show strength somehow. I can, I can only imagine her being already resourceful that she would, uh, she would tap into her birthright and see like mm-hmm. what else is available right. to me. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. She could totally track down Kung Lan and like find out about it and be like, hey, I want this power that yeah I'll fuck that I'll dragon do, I'll do whatever I'll you want me to do that dragon as long as i got the iron <laughs> i'll show danny i'll show danny he's like oh you're crying your parents Danny's are like, dead Stop. Oh. i'm throwing money My at dad's you that's a dick <laughs> did i tell you i'm from kung lun oh yeah okay, yeah we, as long we as i get to see my girl colleen god did you tell me my parents are dead it's like yeah we know your parents are dead bro <laughs> like you're not that tragic Get over it. You're rich. You, you, you yeah, you know, my dad's it. a sociopath. My mom's dead. <laughs> Was murdered. <Yes. laughs> it's like, you know what I mean? Perspective. I ran yeah. away at 15 and built a fighting empire underground in Honk in mainland China. What'd you do, bro? Yeah, well, you came back and you <laughs> fought Faramir in an apartment. Wow. Good for you. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like, well, I'm done, Danny, and I want, you know, can I get my money? <laughs> <laughs> such an asshole honestly for any of you that loved iron fist he was a douchebag oh like it was brutal to watch it was such the a show brutal was worth show it for to watch oh uh, she 100%. was the only pleasant part of it but she felt so underutilized and she in that character she was an excellent actress it was really disappointing that they just didn't really give her as as much time as a lot of people would have wanted and it looked like it was going to that direction but i mean and let's, apparently let's see what happens 
yeah, now that Marvel that, owns all, all this stuff. The same package. And I don't know, I didn't check my sources on this, but I read somewhere not too long ago that that actress was actually approached to audition for Shelling and she turned it down because she said, I really want to come back as Colleen because I love playing that character. Oh, Jay yeah, Hedwig for the girl. win. So if oh, Hedwig is cool. back, I am a thousand percent on board for the Hedwig. Oh, Jessica, man. Could you I'm imagine? Because if she could be building like a lady empire and she hires Colleen. I, Daughters Ooh. of the Dragon. Oh, that's a show right so there, sick. Daughters of the Dragon. That's, oh. yeah, I'm, I'm there. All right. Yeah. Next oh, mystery man, is, is a big one, physically. Arishem. Where will we see him again? Uh, and what will he do when he gets back to Earth? Uh, you're talking about yeah. the Eternals big dude, big right? Big red god man. Um, what, what movie uh, or show are we going to see mm -hmm. this guy in? And when he gets back to Earth, is he coming to judge us? Or to just be like, yeah, you're fine. He's going to come judge us. And then his, his executioner is going to be Galactus. Hands down. No questions asked. I like it. Where do we see him, though? Where does this take place? Which movie? Uh, Eternals 2. <laughs> I, I just feel like he... I, I don't... I can't see him fitting anywhere. I, I see him... You could debate it. You could debate it, but I could see him in the Marvels. If he get if, if mm -hmm. Captain Marvel goes far enough, it could happen. It could happen. It could... It could also very well happen in Guardians... But it's a stretch. And the only reason why I say that is because one in Guardians, the first one, uh, the collector talks about the Celestials. So you do have that yeah. connection for that to work. The problem is with the third Guardians is you have way too much on the plate as it is. Because we know Warlock's going to be a thing. He's got to, mm -hmm. they got to finalize their thing with the Sovereign and uh they got a lot they just yeah, that's got a, a lot thick, to dense up. movie right so now for they're, them they're to, yeah so so that there's way too much on that plate for them to be like okay you know like let's let's tell that story but again captain marvel she she's off in space doing whatever so you could literally fill that gap with like hey let's throw in an eternal there and tell her like hey you know um you think the scrolls lost their home. You don't even know what you're getting into. Here's Galactus. I don't know. But my point is, is like you could you could insert that angle because she's in space. Um or Fantastic Four. God damn it, Ryan. I'm just hoping it doesn't <laughs> happen now. No, I, I actually think Fantastic Four is the most logical one. Because and I, and, and the reason is is because you can introduce uh, you could do a Watu. You could do that Celestial guy all in one movie. Mm. Think about it. Because the, the Watu could be like, there's danger, like there's trouble coming and I've, I vowed not to interfere, but I'm going to, to tell you that this is a problem you need to fix. They go, they go meet the Celestial God and they meet, and through that they meet Galactus. I know. But Galactus won't be, but Galactus will not be a villain. He will be a reference. Yeah, we just hear his name, but we don't see him yet. That's fair. Uh, I'll yeah. throw one more name in the hat here. Uh, with exactly the setup you just put, Ryan. Uatu shows up. He says this thing. Arishem shows up, too. Um, but another place it could theoretically fit is Loki Season 2. <sighs> I... I don't buy it already, but I'll I'll, I'll, I'll I'll take your word for it. I kind of like the Captain Marvel finding Hiroshim. Or, or I don't know, like something with Hiroshim and then like kind of her uncovering what's but, happening with you. But what makes you say Loki, though? Like, why would you say Loki? Just because I feel like what he did is contributing a lot to what's messing up the, the verse right now. Uh, and I feel like Uatu fits into that world specifically. So if Uatu can show up there and say this bad mofo is coming back, if he fits there, he could kind of be the way to, you know, ease, he's the shoehorn to get the foot of Arisham into the door. It's a good idea, but I don't buy it. 
<laughs> yeah, know. it just it's too far. It's just like too far reaching to connect these individuals. Yeah, because where do we leave off Loki? Oh, Loki still uh, King King changed everything. Is he back in the Lo- Loki? Yeah, yeah, back in the DBA. Reset. Yeah, he's back in the TVA after <laughs> Kang reset everything. Hmm. So I don't know. It would take a lot for him to get to go to space and like, yeah. like unless unless he learns the origins of like the Eternals and Celestials, which we kind of learned through the Eternals movie. But like, it's I don't know, man. Loki's got a lot on his plate already with Kang, and like the way they introduce Kang, like that's that's you have to deal with time specifically, and more more specifically than that, you need to deal with Kang's story. With and him. also, we don't like. The Loki is in a universe, in a vein of a universe, but where is it in the other veins of the mm-hmm. stories that are being told, right? We don't even know where he's at in terms of like, um, in terms of like current timeline, like what is time in terms of like the Loki universe, because he's somewhere outside of the existence, uh, outside of the plane of time, right? Where time isn't necessarily affected the same way. So maybe he's not even in this period of marvel yet or, or maybe he is but it's in a parallel yeah, he's like in a pocket dimension or something like it's very separate exactly so i i think it would be far reaching for him to somehow be able to connect with that other timeline when his mm-hmm. timeline seems very separate from everything else and and, it, and the reality could be happening parallel to what's happening now right. yeah marvel's is the best place for it i think and it's just it, it gives her something i think to so do. it gives um it gives yeah you need her to have another big bad and and it makes sense for her too because like i said the last we saw her she like went off with the scrolls like or sorry in her movie she went off with the scrolls to help them find a home and then and like in essentially end game she went back into space kind of thing so and and what i liked in end game too was she discovered tony stark's ship so it kind of you could play that repetitive story a little bit, like that theme where she'll discover another ship, thus Eternals, thus tying everything together. She's she just she would be the perfect instrument to tie that aliens? aspect together. Aliens, <laughs> aliens with aliens. aliens, aliens, aliens. So we have the aliens. Captain Marvel. Then we have the wizards with uh, Doctor Strange and Wanda. Yeah. Then we need the robots. The- Androids. Well, or robots. Speaking androids. of aliens, robots, um, robots. that leads us to our next mystery. I <laughs> love this. Like you guys, guys, I, damn, I'm not He's, doing any. So you guys are doing it. all the work. You're setting these up for me beautifully. I'm actually so <laughs> impressed that you're going through this list so well. <laughs> like, See, we have a particular alien, and I want to know what <laughs> show or movie is this alien going to show up in next? And that's that little wee sperm of symbiote that we saw at the end, just kind of floating around on the. In that Mexican oh, bar. Yeah. What's going to happen? I'm going to say it right now. I'm going to say it right now. Spider-Man, like, if they do another trilogy with Marvel, that's your trilogy. That's full-on, full-on symbiote trilogy. Let's go. Movie, you know, movie one, take over Spider-Man, and it's just Spider-Man becoming Black Symbiote, and life is good. Movie two turns corrupt you know, things are bad and he needs to get rid of the symbiote. Movie three, Spider-Man six, Venom rebooted Tom Hardy and Tom Hardy's like the Eddie Brock story is like completely kind of not completely rebooted, but adjusted and, and plays through the entire trilogy to which the point where movie three, he get or sorry, end of movie five, he gets the symbiote on him and he turns into Venom. And then movie six is like literally showdown. So wait, I have, what about this? What about this? Because technically, uh, Tom Hardy's Venom is in the Tom, not the, what's his name? Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man universe. So yeah. maybe we get to see a Spider-Man 3 with Andrew Garfield where he, you know, he gets the symbiote. And it's not Tom Holland. Mm-hmm. I, I 100% love that. I think that should happen personally. But I, only I mean, because that's there's not still me. rumors that they're still reaching out to Andrew Garfield about a third Spider-Man. Because there yeah. was in the works of a third Spider-Man for him, but they dropped it after the second Spider-Man tank so bad. That maybe that this is how they connect it again. How they close that universe. It's true. I, I well, I, 
specifically though, Anna, the question was referring to the symbiote in the MCU. Fine, I. <laughs> but the other symbiote, you're 100 percent right. The Tom Hardy we know that we've known and seen. 100%. How do you know that, that symbiote isn't going to be uh, Andrew Garfield symbiote? Because it was left in the MCU, and Andrew Garfield went back to Amazing Spider-Man world. But we but, don't know what timeline Tom Hardy's at. He could be in Andrew Garfield's timeline. I'm agreeing with you. I'm oh. saying you're right. But I'm saying I'm <laughs> because Tom Hardy went back to wherever Tom Hardy went back to with yeah, his yeah. Tibiot, right? But a piece was left in the MCU. So uh, my my figure is is they're gonna reboot Venom in the MCU because Feige, I, I read Feige's quote about working with Sony and he's like, look, just let me do my thing and I will I will be you know you'll be happy. That's what he you'll said. Make money. Like, he even said it. He said I don't like I don't like people like consulting with me and stuff. Like I just want to do it my way and and I'll be happy to like collaborate with you. Like ba- so. Basically, he does. He's, he just says, "Sony, look, you tried. I'm gonna help you. I'm literally, you're gonna get make nothing but money out of this. Just let me do it. Just let me do it, and we'll be we'll be happy." So my guess is, with this Venom, is he's gonna reboot it, give everyone the Venom. You know, don't get me wrong. I'm sure a lot of people love the Tom Hardy Venom, but I think people will love more the MCU Venom. Well, I think that. <sighs> No, I love Tom Hardy Venom. He's so good. It's He's like a romance. It's like a rom com. It's like an excellent okay. rom com. The character, the character himself specifically is good. Yes, I will admit that. I will admit <laughs> I love Tom Hardy's Venom, but the story, his movies okay, are terrible. <laughs> oh, absolutely. But it, no, it it is, it is, it, and it's so. I mean, listen, Tom Hardy does an excellent job playing a dirty, filthy anti-hero that just nattering to himself he really does a good job well that's but you're that, you're right we do that's why it would be in their best interest to just double down on both of that because i love the tom hardy version too i think that's that's venom i look at him on the screen i'm like that's brock and that's venom it works so double down on that you bring him back he is this universe's version of brock who has never had the symbiote yet Mm-hmm. Maybe he moves to New York from San Francisco. That's why nobody knows him. And he's like, hey, I'm a reporter. I want to work for J. John Jameson. I'm a reporter. And he goes to go work for Jameson. And then uh, I, somehow the symbiote gets up there. I don't know. It takes a one-way ticket. Uh, it, it's traveling. We know that the symbiote can travel. And it finds him. And I think, honestly, I think in the same way that we can skip Uncle Ben's death now because we know it, I think we can skip Peter with the black suit because not only do we know that story, but just from a purely selfish, vapid Andrew point of view, we've just had two movies where they kept Peter in black suits. And I'm sorry, I want my red and blue. Like I want my, and we've just got a beautiful red and blue. I want that now. Like I want a full movie of that. And to see the red and blue go up against the venom is going to look gorgeous. Uh, So I say don't waste a movie on Symbiote Peter. Maybe a few scenes, Mm -hmm. but get that Symbiote on Brock as fast as you can so that you can get the interplay. Because the evil Toby Peter was great. The interplay between him and Venom was not because it was four seconds long and Venom had Mm -hmm. his face off the whole time. So that interplay is what we've been dying to see. So Get, get to that, cut to that chase. And I think they know that. Yeah, I'll buy it. I'll take that. Yeah. Only because right now we have an isolated Peter. We have a, a very lonely Peter. So he wouldn't have anybody that would bring him down to earth to realize that that relationship is toxic. So I think that's probably out of the question. It would be too probably like too dark, I think even for Marvel to like put Peter in that situation where he has... He lost all the resources. He lost the support system. Now he's being used by a parasite. There's nobody in his orbit Mm -hmm. that he can hurt or consult with. He'd be like, oh, I can't believe I hit MJ. I can't believe I pushed Aunt May. Like, this is bad. Like, that's, he doesn't have that world anymore. So, yeah. We can just get Brock in there being all messy. Be like, hey, I'm going to eat some raw chicken. And, 
maybe he'll be too strong for for Peter. Maybe Peter will have to reveal who he is. He'll have to try to get someone to help him because he doesn't have the suit. He doesn't have the Avengers. He's just by himself. Maybe he'll be too strong of a foe for him to do on his own. So he'll have to ask Star Strange, I need you to help me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I know you don't know me, but you did. And I fucked this did. up. <laughs> yeah. Well, but there's aliens. Spider-Man villains. Guys, is Kingpin alive? 100%. Yeah. Oh, oh 100% he is. Yes. If you, if you read the Echo comic, it plays out pretty much the exact same way where she shoots him. But what happens is the bullet like ricochets or something and it caused him to go blind for a little and while. I mean, that man took some abuse that night, right? That man mm-hmm. took uh, arrows, bombs, cars. Mm-hmm. He is a yeah. Mack truck of a human being. I don't think one itty bitty bullet is going to do I said it. I said it. I said it in, in the episode, in that episode that we talked about. There's a reason why they did the shot where he gets shot with the arrow in the chest and he literally rips it out and there's no blood. It's because he's wearing Kevlar. He's, he's wearing something underneath his Hawaiian shirt. And I bet you they're not going to do the, like, I don't think she's going to go executioner style and, and point blank shoot him in the head. I think she's going to shoot him in the chest and and he's going to just Rip it get up, up later. Yeah. Cuz you hear you hear two sounds. You hear a gunshot and you don't hear like a soft thud. You hear a you hear like a thunk, like something like he like metal like or something. Like hit something. Yeah. So my guess is there's a reason why they foreshadow the shot where he rips the arrow out of his chest, no blood, nothing. It's because he's wearing Kevlar, and and that's it. I am, I'm so down for that. I, I, I'm just going to add a thumbs up because that's exactly what I want. No blindness. I just wanted to be alive and mm-hmm. kicking and getting up and brushing it off and coming back to be more kingpin badassness. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Uh, what do you think, Anna? You think that's that sounds good to you too? Yeah. Beautiful. So, speaking of beautiful, yeah. Linda Cardellini, my my uh, one one of my biggest MCU crushes, Mrs. Hawkeye. All right. Yeah. Is she the Mockingbird? Wow. I'm upset she is. I. Really? And I'll tell you. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. One is because they said specifically Agents of Shield is not canon. So if that's the case, Mockingbird is out from Agents of Shield. So they need a new Mockingbird, and it's perfect because in an alternate world, that would be it would just be perfect because like she would be Mockingbird and the Hawkeye had a love story, and it would make perfect. I didn't sense even for realize them. Mockingbird was on that show. Was she the she the tall lady that was in John Wick one? Is that who Mockingbird was? Oh wow! Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Damn, Ryan. So. I, okay, yeah, yeah no. I'll, I'll I'll take that. That's good. No, they Can't they argue had a that. huge, huge love story in the comics, so it only makes sense that in a world they would be together. Yeah, I'm all for that. Yeah, no, can't argue with so, that. So that leads us to our final mystery. Who, what, where, and when is Kang? I don't feel like it's going to happen. <laughs> What do you mean you don't think it's going to happen? No, no, I, I just... It's going to happen. He's in no, he's I know. Ant-Man. No, I know. I just, I don't know. I... I don't feel like... Okay, I know he's right now, King is like the, the big... He, what, what is he? He's a wizard. So he's a, he's, a, he's a wizard bad. I'm, I just think the alien overlord, the 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 god, like alien space gods, I think is a bigger story than King. So I feel like King is going to be wrapped up. I don't think it'll. I I don't I don't feel like it will be as much as space. I, like, how do you introduce space gods and just leave it like that? It's not. A, it's it's such a big story. I just don't think King is going to be as big as space gods. Honestly, I don't know if we could 
I don't know if we can. We, I don't think we get both. I don't think we get both in the way that we want to have it. I don't think we can answer. I don't think we can answer this one. And I'll tell you why. And I'll tell you why. Because Kang, in terms of the Marvel formula right now, Kang is driving the narrative for a pr- good chunk of the story right now. So you can't you can't wrap up his story. Like it's not going to tidy up and be a nice little bow and bada bing, bada boom, we're done. He's, he's a big narrative. And he, from what I understand, what Marvel's trying to do right now is they need a Thanos villain, like a Thanos level villain in the movies. And people are all saying it's doom. People are all saying it's Galactus. I think that doom is going to be like, Doom, I don't know if if he's going to be the Thanos, but I I think he will be like an he'll be like an Ultron. Like he'll be a mid-level boss and then Kang is still the final boss boss. Really? I ha- I don't know. Have- I feel like they're just these themes are just so big. I ju- I no. you know what? Let I'm going to I'm going to go with what Ryan said. I don't know how to answer that question only because we have tackled such big themes in this podcast that I, I, it's hard for me to visualize Kang somehow. There's no way you could wrap up his story right now. No, no. I, I just, I don't know. How do you, how are you going to tell that story along with everything else? Mm -hmm. I just think it's just, it's too big. You'd have to weave them together somehow. And the only way I can think of, and this is literally just like, and again, we're going back to Kang is, how do we know he's in this in this specific plane right. or in this yeah. timeline? We don't know where King really fits in in the time in the Marvel timeline because he does he's only affecting that specific plane. That's why, yeah, it's it's like who, do you know what, what I mean? Where like, so, and when is he? I just feel so mm-hmm. entirely separate. So it's it's so removed from what we're doing. But we know they're sprinkling him. Like, we know he's not just going to be in Loki, and apparently he's not just going to be in Ant-Man. I, the only thing I can think of, and it probably makes no sense, and it might be too crazy by half a mile, but is that these big space gods come and they mess stuff up so badly that the Avengers or whoever goes to make a deal with the devil, and they go to Kang, and they say, look, you're a time guy. Can you undo this? And he does... But there's consequences. Spider-Man. Yeah, there's Spider-Man consequences. Spider-Man. <laughs> Spider-Man. He makes the yeah. same mistake twice. Playing with time. You know what? I like that, actually. I'm going to give you that yeah. one on that. I'm going to give you that one, Fantasia. But I will say, I will say, I don't know if I'm 100% sold on the idea because, you know, tonight we solved a lot of mysteries. We did. We did. <laughs> but there are some mysteries that are left unsolved. Oh, damn, Ryan. Cue the scary music. <laughs> well, that was a really insightful look. You guys are a couple of Sherlock Holmeses, and I'm glad I had you aboard here to, to look at these mysteries because there's a lot. And most of those were just from stuff that came out in 2021. Isn't that nuts? Just 2021. Yeah. So we, uh, I'm glad we got to do it before new stuff came out this year because I feel like that's just going to add more to the mix. Uh, and maybe next year we'll be doing another mm-hmm. one of these, a round two. Uh, but in the meantime, folks, do you have any last things to say before we wrap up? This is going to be the best year for MCU now. We have got we got out of the woods with Eternals, and now we're walking in and, and ended on probably one of the biggest notes for the MCU with Spider-Man. And now we're kicking off the new year with freaking Moon Knight right out of the gate and then we got freaking doctor strange and then we have freaking thor love and thunder and then amazing this is gonna be the craziest year for marvel i am excited for supernatural i am i'm excited for blade like i i i'm not a huge um jared leto fan i just think he's awful I'm excited for Morbius just because it's like, yes, we're finally entering this world. We're finally going to go there. I think there. Tommy Wiseau would have been a perfect Morbius, but they, they missed the Oh, book. absolutely. Oh, 100%. Uh, absolutely. I'm, I'm definitely That's looking forward right to there. the Netflix smash hit, The Kissing Booth 5, and then the Marvel stuff. But uh, yeah, I'll, <laughs> I agree. This is going to be a very good year. 
But until more mysteries crop up, mm -hmm. I hope everybody listening realizes how smart and wonderful the three of us are and how we totally nailed every guess <laughs> that we made. Uh, so we'll see you all next time, or you'll hear us all next time, depending what medium you use. I ain't going to judge you here on Infinity Rewatch. Until then, please have a marvelous day.